Hello. <laughs> I don't know why I greeted y'all like that, bro. That was the most, that was the most weirdest hello. Ow. Uh, my arm keeps on cracking. Bruh. Punch somebody's face today in a spar, not just a random person. <laughs> well, it was a random person to me, but it was sanctioned, I think. I don't know. Whatever, bro. I punched somebody's face today and my shoulder, like, I think I punched him too hard. Am I getting old, bruh? Oh, no. I'm gonna die soon. <laughs> hey, let me knock on wood, bro. I ain't dying anytime. Ow. Uh. <laughs> Come on, bro. What's happening? <laughs> Hi, name is Chai Blue. I hope your days are well. You're feeling swell. I don't know if y'all know, but y'all probably do know. I love watching these true crime documentaries. I've been watching Explore With Us. I've been kind of wanting something else. So, in my quest to find more true crime documentaries, the tribe per usual came to the rescue we like it tuh you already know what the vibe is rotten mango will pop up on the channel much much more often if we don't like it why this video might be short it actually might be non-existent because i won't post like <laughs> i won't post me not like the thing is i don't want to post me disliking folks's content because i know they put work into it and i think i feel like everybody's hating on the internet i'm not trying to be one of them I'm different. You know what I mean? Man, let's get this shit popping, boy. What's top? Bada bing, bada bing. Bada, June bada. of 2014, Hi. something very, very strange happened in South Korea. Whoa. A man without a home was found dead in an apricot orchard. He's wearing an Italian-made jacket, like a suit jacket, a very nice jacket. Okay. He was found outside this orchard of apricots with this book next to him an empty bottle of shark liver oil which is commonly used as a health supplement in south korea well not commonly just sometimes oh it's like the yeah fish oil pills yeah but it's like oh. shark liver it's not recommended most people don't use it but it's kind of in like a niche health sphere people use shark it shark liver along with several empty bottles of alcohol nearby him just dead in this apricot field the fact that his body was so badly decomposed and the way that he was found, there were rumors that he was so decomposed that his head was separated from the rest of the body. What the f- Now, the police said that they were pretty certain that they were dealing with a man that was without a home. But once they ran some tests, they realized they could not have been more wrong. The dead body in the orchard belonged to a billionaire. But not just any billionaire. The nation's most wanted man. There hold on, hold on. What is his title? I didn't even read it. Korean no-face billionaire mysteriously linked to a pile of 32 dead people in attic. Ooh. Okay, okay. Hold on. I like where this is going. This is intriguing. The dead I body in the orchard belonged to a billionaire. But not just any billionaire, the nation's most wanted man. There was currently a $50,000 reward for anyone who knew even just information about this billionaire's whereabouts. And this apricot field was just 1.5 miles away from his holiday home. So it makes sense. It's the billionaire, right? But the yeah. authorities said, no, 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 we, we searched inside his holiday home. We found two suitcases filled with cash that totaled to about a million dollars USD. Both were hidden behind a fake wall that led into a panic room. He must have hidden here while we were searching the place a week prior, and, and that makes sense, but it doesn't make any sense why he was dead. Yeah, why? Did he take his life? Was he killed? Was there a foul play? His death was so mysterious, it led conspiracy theorists to believe that he was still alive. Hmm. Maybe he faked his death. Maybe I mean, this was a decoy body in place of the billionaire. With and a that billion billionaire dollars? Is out on the run. I mean, if money can buy freedom. Facts. He's got all the money in the world. Mm -hmm. And as mysterious as his death is, his life was even more mysterious, if you can talk, believe it. Like, talk this to billionaire me. was known as the billionaire without a face in South Korea. He was incredibly elusive, reclusive, incredibly private, but he held art exhibits all around the world at places like the Louvre. He had a gala thrown in his honor at the Palace of Versailles. He had oh. his art displayed at the Grand Central Terminal in New York City. He was connected to some of the biggest politicians, government officials, business owners. And at one point, he owned the domain www.god.com. Mm -hmm. What? Wow. And yet, what? not many people knew his name. See, you know what this reminds me of? Where people are like, you think Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk run the world? There's a whole set of billionaires we probably don't even know oh, exist God. that are not in the public eye that CNN and Fox don't write about. 
and those are the people that are making moves. This is kind of yo, she's spinning, bro. <laughs> yo, that like actually facts. Actually, facts. What happened to this nigga? There's a whole set of billionaires we probably don't even know exist that are not in the public eye that CNN and Fox don't write about. And those are the people that are making moves. Mm. This is kind of reminiscent of that. Chess player, Nobody but... really knew his name. Nobody really even talked about him. He fell under the radar up until his death. But it seemed like he was connected to a lot of dark stuff. Firstly, he founded a church that is accused of being a cult. He was connected to two of the biggest tragedies in South Korean modern history. One from a few decades ago, where 32 bodies were found dead and tangled in an attic, just tied up together. And more recently, the billionaire was connected to the company that owned this Hewar ferry. The boat that sank killing over 300 people at God. the very least, oh I mean, directly God. and indirectly. And he was actually on the run from being investigated because of this Hewar Ferry incident when he was found mysteriously dead. Okay. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about the first tragedy, the 32 bodies in the attic. But on Wednesday's episode, this upcoming main episode, we're going to do a deep dive onto this Hewar Ferry tragedy. And with these two episodes, you're going to see how one billionaire was suspiciously, mysteriously linked to both cases of mass death. I mean, it feels straight out of one of those crazy conspiracy horror movies or no sleep stories, but it really happened. <laughs> that, that's how you do an intro. Hold on. What's up, uh? Yo, the piano is playing on my spine. Boy, that thing feels good. That's a crazy intro. Who is the dude in the back? As that always, how? full show notes are available at rottenmanglepodcast.com. But one source for this case was the Netflix man's. documentary that we also like used that. for the JMS cult. It's called In the Name of God. Now, it's the Five Oceans episode. And you can tell throughout the entirety of the episode that Netflix is hinting at stuff. They're hinting at a lot of connections between the Five Oceans incident and the billionaire, but they never really flat out say what that connection is, probably for the reason that I'm about to read you a legal disclaimer, okay? For legal reasons, I have been advised to say that before we get started, two things to remember. Okay. Yu Byung Un, the billionaire in today's case, is not the de facto owner of this Hewar Ferry. He's connected in certain ways, but he is not the de facto CEO and owner. And the Evangelical Baptist Church, which was created by this billionaire, is not legally connected to the Five Oceans tragedy, the 32 bodies in the attic that we're going to be discussing today. So what makes Even it suspicious? Even if we make any sort of connections between these two entities or these two people does not mean that it's an insinuation of liability and guilt or otherwise. Okay. Which also leads me to say, if anything happens to me, I'm kidding, but I'm only half kidding because I talked to my parents about this family, this billionaire family, and my dad was like, yeah, they're really scary. Good luck. Goodbye. And he hung up on me. I'm like, they're not listening to my calls, dad. Like, that's, wow. Maybe they that's are. That's crazy. Because yeah. they're an international family. Oh, your dad really loves you, huh? Yeah, he has no care in the world for me. He's like, got two grandkids. I'm like the least of his worries now. So oh. let's get started before I get more white hairs on this head. The Five Oceans Incident. Oh, let me turn on cashes August for y'all. August 29th in 1987. So we're going back, but trust me, it's all going to come back together to 2014. And I would not be discussing this case if it wasn't related to what's going to T be talked about on Wednesday. Okay. August 29th. We got to watch that too then. It was an incredibly rainy day. A homicide detective by the name of Detective Sam gets a call to head to this tiny little factory out near the mountains. Okay. He wasn't really told what was going on. Nobody was like, you need to get over here. We've got 32 bodies in an attic. He's just told, <laughs> rush through the rain. I don't care what it takes. You get here ASAP. So he drives through the rain, he's got his sirens on, and he knows that the factory is belonging to a company called Odeyang, otherwise translated to Five Oceans. So I'm going to be calling them the Five Oceans Company. Now, when the officer steps inside this factory, 
all the lights are off. It's like almost an abandoned factory. It doesn't look like it's being used anymore. He notices that there's a bunch of people gathered, other detectives that were closer to the scene. There's reporters gathered. There is news footage of this that is um, constantly, I, I would not post it on here because I don't think it's appropriate, but there is a lot of crazy news footage and it's in the Netflix doc and you can even hear one of the reporters saying, I mean, there's no way we're going to air this anyway. It's that bad. Damn, what? The, the scene? Yeah. So there's news cameras everywhere, news anchors. I mean, just a mess. He notices that the like... ceiling, so he's in the factory cafeteria, and he notices that the ceiling has already started to be disassembled. There's workers there taking apart the ceiling so that they can have this giant hole. And he's like, why do we need a giant hole? What's going on? There's this ladder leading up to this hole. So he grabs a flashlight, and he starts climbing up this ladder because... He's the head detective of this case now. He pokes his head through the ceiling into the attic. And it's just one big open space. It's not big. It's not tall. It's not furnished. It's unfinished. It's what you imagine an attic would look like. Mm -hmm. And he shines his flashlight around. And he said in his decades of being an officer. That sounds like some nightmare case, shit, bro. never seen anything like that. Like He pans his flashlight and he sees 32 bodies. All dead, all stacked up on top of each other, tangled apart. Like just, it was very, very unsettling. What? The site wasn't just this pile of bodies. It wasn't like this dumping ground with a mountain of bodies. He said it felt almost methodical in a sense, which made it even more unsettling. Yeah. There were two piles of bodies that were kind of diagonal from each other. So one pile of bodies here with like 12 people, another pile with 19 bodies. And then in the center, almost directly in the center of these two diagonal piles was a man hanging from the ceiling. There was a rope around his neck. It's just the whole thing is strange. Everyone had their wrists and ankles tied. Their nostrils and mouths were stuffed with some sort of cotton or toilet paper. In total, it was four men, 28 women, and a total of 32 people dead in this attic. I mean, this is the biggest mystery that South Korea had seen in, geez, I don't know how long. Like, how do 32 people die in one place at the same time? There was no natural disaster. It wasn't some sort of disease, no fire, no earthquake. It just doesn't even make sense. Yeah. The detective said the one thing that kept getting to him th throughout the entire investigation is, how do 32 people lay there next to each other? Here, their neighbor dying. They themselves are dying. Nobody tries to stop it. All 32 people just let it happen is kind Ish. of how the scene was set up. Like. He doesn't understand. So more puzzling is the man in the center of the attic was hanging from his neck. But the mysterious part was he was on his knees. The attic ceiling is not that tall. So you could presume that he died by hanging himself. But he was on his knees, so he could have just stood up. Mm -hmm. So he chose not to stand up. Which is pretty rare, right? Yes. So he's human, saying, even yeah. yes, even human though, nature let's say you will make like the decision force to, you to stand be back like, up, I don't bro. Be here anymore. But even go cat to you, bro. This is kind of crazy. If you've ever been hypnotized and the hypnotist says to jump off the roof, you're not gonna jump off because your human nature, you won't be able to do it, bro. But even in the last moments, typically people might freak out and their self-preservation kicks in, their survival mode kicks in, mm -hmm. and he was on his knees. He could have just stood up. Like, He's saying that's very, very uncommon. So the main question that investigators had was, I mean, of course, what everyone was thinking, is this a mass, is this some sort of murder event that happened? Or is this just mass murder? Did someone kill these 32 people and the killers are on the run right now? Because that's a whole different type of investigation. Uh, so yeah. they're trying to figure out who are these people? Would someone out there even want these people dead? And all of these answers lies in one person, one woman amongst the 32. It was a 48-year-old woman by the name of Park sun -ja. We're going to call her Park. She's at the center of this case. She Rosa. is the one person in that attic that every single other 31 people are connected to. She is the middle of the web. Is she the one hanging? No. Oh, she's one, not hanging. She's no. in the pile? Yes. A man was hanging. He worked in the factory. He was the factory manager was hanging. She's just in one of the piles. What so, makes it even stranger is that three of her kids, all three of her kids, were in the attic and dead. The oh. only person that survived from her family was her husband who was not in that attic. Did a, they find the husband immediately then? Oh, yeah. And he's saying, I'm a victim. 
my whole family died, so why are you guys questioning me? I'm telling you, this gets very, very thick and crazy, and I need you to understand the whole event before we get into the ties with the billionaire because it's so unexpected. You're going to listen to this, think, oh, this sounds like a cult story, but trust me, I never even knew where this was going. So she's found dead in the attic along with mm -hmm. her three kids. Mm -hmm. The police immediately start investigating her because she is this. I'm sorry, I'm not pausing again, but the way she's crafting this story, I'm locked in. I am like, <laughs> y'all know, bro. I love be my stories, cuz I love stories. And she is painting the picture so beautifully, nigga. I feel like I'm standing in the attic, bro. This shit is wicked. The attic along with her three kids. The police immediately start investigating her because she is the special link amongst all of them. So let's dig into Pak Sun Ja and a little note left behind. Now, these are the only clues that the police have initially. Is Pak Sun Ja, the woman in the center, yeah. and a little torn note. So there were torn pieces of paper all over the attic just as if someone ripped it apart and threw it around. So they picked up each one, they went back to the station, they start piecing it together, and it's a note. There's writing on the front and the back, and the most important part reads, keep your mouth shut. She's already unconscious. Five people died in only four hours. Just stay quiet. I plan this out. Endure it with his guidance. I think everyone will die today. What kind of note is that? What? I mean, so strange. There's actually another note that's found, but we're going to discuss that later. Okay. So who is Park and what is this whole event? Oh, God. Park is a CEO of a massive company in the local area of Taejeon. Now, what? when this whole case starts unfolding, it actually started with an investigation from the police, an investigation of fraud. So this couple comes into the police station like a week before the bodies are found. And this couple, they, they look beat up. They've got bruises, scratches. I mean, they've got a busted lip, a black eye. And they sit down and they tell the police, you'll never believe what happened. So there's this company. I'm sure you've heard of them. Odeyang, the Five Oceans Company. So they're a trading company, which means you can invest with them. And it's like a an investment firm. You invest with them, they promise you returns and you get your money back and it's this whole thing. And I trusted them. So I invested $500,000 of my money, my whole life savings, right, officer? Now, I was promised 40% returns. 40%, which is <laughs> insane. <laughs> yeah, if you like, hear anyone in the investment world promising you 40% that's returns, a, that's not even Ponzi scheme. feasible. Yeah, you better run the other way and call the cops because something oh, very, very shady is going on. <laughs> so not, he's huh? saying, me and my wife, 40%. we invested 500K. We were expecting 40%. We got $0. Nothing came back. So we're like, well, we Damn. need our savings back. This feels like a scam. We go to Odeyang, oh, this very professional like compound. You know, they've got office buildings. All the employees are everywhere. It's like a factory. We go in. We're like, can we talk to the CEO? We sit down with her and we say, listen, we love what you're doing, but, you know, we got to pay the bills. Can yeah. we get our money back? Pak Sunja looks at them, calls like seven employees over, and they beat the couple an inch of their life. Not only do they beat them, but in the end, they force them to sign a waiver, basically forfeiting their rights to their $500,000 initial investment plus the returns that they were promised. Oh my God. Saying that all debt has been cleared. Nigga. That they just gave Five Oceans this money for funsies. So they're like, look at this. I was forced to sign this. Look at the state of my face. They ran to the police station immediately when they were released from Odeyang. And the police decide to open a formal investigation into this company. And they were pretty surprised to find out that this company was a reputable company. Mm. I think that they were expecting some sham company. Like one look at it, you're like, that's a scam. How did they not know? This company was well known in the Taejeon area as a very decent, excellent sized craft business. So they have one department of their company is the trading business, like the investment business. But the main side of their company, well, they say, is their craft business. So they've got factories in Taejeon and they have all these employees who make these traditional Korean pieces of knickknacks. Sometimes it's jewelry boxes. Sometimes it's, you know, like wooden toys. And it's almost like a souvenir company. They yeah, I'm about to say. Yeah, want to take home like a, a piece of, like a tourist historical of Korea with them. So people freaking love them. In yeah, fact, like Udeyang was shit. known as one of the best companies in the area. They constantly won awards for their craftsmanship, for their business practices. Oh, I mean, they were killing it. On top of that, the CEO, Park Sun Ja, the one that was found in the attic, she was called the mother of orphans. 
Whoa, what is going on? How do you even get a nickname on? like that, okay? Th how do you even get a nickname like that? She's like one of those uh, tech billionaire scam artists. Like that's the vibe that she gives me. The way that she set up her company was she wanted to be all about the employees. So she set up all these dorms, these living quarters near her factory, on the grounds of her factory, like right next to the factory. You are welcome to live there as my employee. You and your whole family can live here for free. I want you to just focus on work and not stress about bills. I provide food. I provide housing. You can move nah, in. You can bring your children. You know why bro. you can bring your children? Because while you're working, we've got this massive children's compound where we teach your kids. We house them. We feed them. We do dance lessons with them. We have all these extracurricular activities with them. And you know what? Like, it sounds good on paper, but nah, bro. Lessons with them. We have all these extracurricular activities with them. And you know what? But we even have a ton of orphans in there. I love orphans. That was like her shtick, okay? She's like, I love orphans. I want to help orphans. Anytime she was in any sort of interview, she played the whole, I'm rich, okay? I'm rich. I'm a CEO of Odeang. My husband is a government official. We're very wealthy, but I don't care about money. Okay, she's like such a pick me. She says, I don't care about money <laughs> or stocks or fashion or jewelry or cars yeah. i just care about giving back. the orphans man the there's orphans. this one interview where she tries to force a tear out and she says i just don't want to live in a world where children have to worry about where their next meal comes from oh my god how can god. i wear nice things when there are kids out there who can't even afford water shut up <laughs> Textbook. Bro, you don't mean that. So everyone is like, oh like, my God. Odeyang is like the nicest company ever. And the CEO is like the mother of orphans. She's amazing. I want to work for this company. Look at how she treats her employees. Yo. She was praised by the locals as being a great businesswoman. She would even have people come in and film the factory. And you would see all these factory <laughs> workers that were making all these little knickknacks. You would see the orphans singing and dancing and being like, I love Mrs. Park, right? <laughs> well, guess what? You guessed it. It was all a scam. It was all the a whole scam. Thing was a freaking scam. Charlie has so been manipulating from folks from the these jump. These employees were not even being paid. These were free laborers. Oh, like, why would they work what? for free? Park Sun Jao was a very manipulative, cunning woman. I could tell. So most of these employees worked for free. When they lived on the grounds, they said it. it was very, very strange because they weren't even allowed to talk to each other. I you know work it. for Odeang. I'm your wife. We're not allowed to talk to each other. What? It's so strange. She would separate couples. She would separate the kids from her employees, the families. She would throw them into the little orphan dorms, I guess. And she would even go on TV and be like, look at this orphan. Orphan, what's your name? Tell them you're an orphan and tell them what your name is. So the kid would be like, uh, my name is Stephanie. And the parents would be watching on TV like, wait, 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 I'm an employee and that's my kid. And why is my kid on TV acting like she's an orphan right now? And yeah, why is daughter. Park telling her to <laughs> tell the world that she's an orphan? I'm her mom. What's going on right now? So all of these things will later come out. But at the time, nobody knew. The locals are just looking at her like, she's bringing business to our community. This is Damn. great. And okay, but why didn't anybody say anything, though? I'm trying to, because there has to be a reason. Food on the table a roof over your head. If I had a kid and I wasn't able to see them, but at the same time, they're getting fed, they're getting an education, they have a roof over their head. And if I wasn't able to provide that prior to getting this job, I guess I would keep my mouth shut if my child was guaranteed a good future. But bro, a kid should be with their parents. That is very integral to the development of any child, bro. Come out, but at the time, nobody knew. The locals are just looking at her like, she's bringing business to our community. This is great. And when she opened up her trading business, her investment firm, everyone was all about it. Like the locals were all about it. Her employees almost became salespeople. Her employees stopped working in the factory, which side note, they never worked in the factory because just like how her little orphanage was a scam, her factory was a scam. What? They were drop shippers before there was drop shipping. Oh All my of God. those Korean knickknacks they said were handmade by these employees were purchased from wholesalers and sold at <laughs> double the amounts claiming to be handmade. They were not. Damn. So instead of a factory, it was just a warehouse. 
I ain't gonna lie, that's a, a, that's a, a crazy unit. finesse. Yeah, and then all those uh, people now looking back at the videos, like the promo videos of all the factory workers making the thing, they're like, you know what? That's true. They're always in the finishing steps where they're just like wiping it off. Mm. They're like, oh, they, we're doing QC quality control. You know, that's what we're doing right now. That's the step. It's just interesting. It but people didn't know that. Locals didn't know it at the time. They heard that Odeyang was open for investment and all these locals are like, I don't know anything about the investment world. I couldn't buy a stock. I just don't know anything. Like I don't know that world. And now this woman who is praised as being the mother of orphans is saying that not only will she take your money and give you a fat return, a 40% return, but she's saying that all this money is being invested into businesses that give a lot of their profits to orphans and to giving back to the world. It's almost like three birds, one stone. I mean, you cannot come up with a better investment situation than that. You're helping the world and you're making 40% on your money? If it sounds Are too you good to be me? true, it's too good to People be true. People start like... throwing their money at Odeyang. And everything was done very professionally. Odeyang would even give them these slips. These very official looking slips that said, Thank you for your money. You are now a creditor to Odeyang. We owe you your initial investment plus interest. So they're like, that's got to be serious. Odeyang at one point had close to $80 million that they brought in in investment in this little (laughs) small area of Daejeon. This is not even like Seoul, Seoul. The dude in the back is actually funny. That's a lot. And this was back in the day. Yeah, and this is... You know, when you're talking about areas like that, you're not talking about Seoul elites (laughs) that are just throwing whatever cash they have laying around. You're talking about family's entire savings. Everyone trusted Park Sunja. And because her husband was a government worker, her name had a lot of weight to it. But it's like a bank run happened, okay? 1987, around August, the couple goes and asks for their money back. She beats them up. Turns out they're not the only couple that asked for their money back. A whole bunch of people started seeing that they were not getting any returns from Odeyang and they wanted to pull out their initial investments. Yeah. And the walls are coming down on Park. Even the police knew it. The police were like, this is not even a regular simple fraud case. We're probably going to give this to the feds. Like, we're going to bring in some higher level people <laughs> for this because it's that bad. Damn. So a week before she ends up in the attic, they bring her into the police station to question her. They're like, we just want to ask you questions about your shop and what's going on, you know? (laughs) And she sits there and they say it's, the police said it's very fascinating. She's called the mother of orphans. And I'm not saying that you can judge a book by its cover, but she just didn't look like the mother of orphans. What you mean by that? I don't know what you expect when you see the mother of orphans, but she was Like some St. Mary type vibes? In Korean, we call it like... (sighs) Like, what? What? It, it's very um sharp features, very thin, mm. and kind of looks lanky. She's not necessarily tall, but like she looks not, very not thin like a, and bony. She doesn't look like a matronly and figure. sharp features, and her eyes are so sharp. And they like just pierce through your soul. That's the feeling. Woman. And it That's just what didn't feel like. warm or compassionate. <laughs> it didn't feel like someone that was like, oh, I'm so sorry, officer. There must be a misunderstanding. Like, what's going on? So the whole time she's sitting there looking at them as if she knows something that they don't know. And the police keep grilling her and dramatically, out of nowhere, she just faints. The lady just faints. Like, actually? The authorities think that the whole thing was staged, that she was faking it. But for legal reasons, they can't be like, hey, lady, stop faking it. For legal (laughs) reasons, they got to take her to the hospital. So they take her to the ER. And I don't know, maybe because she's like a 50-year-old woman and she's skinny and frail looks and 50? looks like an Ajuma. Oh, my God. They're like, we don't need police guards. Ajuma. We don't need to do that. Well, they did. Because yeah. she walked right out of the ER and vanished with 80 of her closest associates from the company. They vanished without a single trace. 80 You know people? what they also vanished with? $18 million of corporate funds. Jesus. Authorities go to the factory and the dorms of Odeyang, like the main compound, and they start asking around. Everyone that's left over is like, I don't know what you're talking about. They're shrugging their so- shoulders like, I don't know where she went. I don't know. You don't ask me. Felt like they knew. Yeah. yeah. yeah 100%. So, but they got to know something. Exactly. Or like, which direction did they go? At yeah, least, there's right? 80 people. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's not even- <laughs> That's not like one person slips out. Like, oh, yeah. I was so distracted. 80 people. 80 people. Crazy, bro. So they get word that Park was found hiding in the attic her. of one of her more obscure factories near the mountains. The police rush there and outside they spot a van that also is belonging to Odeyang. So maybe, just maybe she is in there. She was. 
But she and 31 others were found dead. And this is when all chaos breaks loose. Oh. Wait, that means what? 50 people got away? Yeah, yeah. so I think that they... Um, I think she probably left with a certain number of people. I'm sure a big number of the other 50 were just people that were running. They're like, I don't want anything to do uh, with this. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I gotta go. So uh, Park could no longer protect her secrets anymore because she was dead. And slowly, all of her secrets start coming out. And that, one of her biggest secrets, is going to connect to the dead billionaire from 2014. This is tough. Oh, okay. So we've touched on the shady business practices of yeah. taking in the investor money and promising all these returns and none of that works, right? Mm -hmm. But it's alleged that Park's company was just a fake company. It was a front for a religious organization. There were rumors floating around. Low that key, Park low key, that's what it, bro. For the way they separated everybody and said that you can't talk to each other, that does sound like some like religious cult type of like organization, bro. Works, right? But it's alleged that Park's company was just a fake company. It was a front for a religious organization. There were rumors floating around that Park and her employees were not a company. It was a messiah and her followers. This was a church that was parading around as a corporation. Mm. Why do people think that? A lot of victims came forward and said, I applied to work at this company and someone recommended that I work here. I thought it was a factory. I start working here and she's going around telling us that she cured her own cancer back in the day by prayer alone and that she is the Messiah, the conqueror of the five <laughs> oceans. And if we disobey her, we'll all go to hell. And I was like, whoa, I thought this was a nine to five that I was signing up for. What the hell is going on? All the other employees were like deep in it. That's what some of the victims said. These employees were like, yes. And they later found out that some of these employees weren't no. even getting paid. They weren't even getting paid. They were just free Am labor. Yo, I'm the tipping. victim said, you know, it started to get really weird when she forced us to ask no. her permission to leave the grounds of the factory. She also had something called sin time, like repentance time to repent for your sins. It happened randomly, probably like once a month. We'd all be gathered in the gym room, almost like a company meeting, but we would be forced to slap each other in the face. Like just sit there and like slap each other around to repent for our sins. It was a lot. She was also had this uh, apocalyptic <laughs> streak about her. She just really felt like the world was ending. And she felt like everyone needed to obey her to be saved. She also was quoted to say, the factory is heaven. And if you want to go to heaven, you work here for free. Which, what so all these little insinuations <laughs> of her being a part of a religious cult or being a cult leader start coming out. And the investigators are like, okay, we need to take this into account. And this is when we see two very popular theories form of what happened in Odeyang. Because to this day, I don't think there's anyone that can say with 100% certainty that they know what happened up there in the attic. Okay. That they know what happened to these 32 people. Like that. So the first route comes from prosecutors and the police and the formal justice. Justice Department of South Korea. So the investigators had found 100 pieces of cotton and fabric that had been stuffed into the victims, the 32 people's mouths in the attic. Mm -hmm. And everyone assumed that the pieces of fabric would be laced with some sort of toxic chemical or something that wasn't compatible with life. And that is what killed everyone, right? That's what everyone's thinking. But no, they were all clean. There was no sign of any sort of toxic substance, which is very, very odd. I mean, these pieces of fabric were shoved very deeply even into the nostrils of these 32 people. The autopsies of all 32 people showed that all of them had ligature strangulation marks. They died from manual strangulation, meaning that someone had tied a rope around their neck, tightened it, and started pulling and pulling and pulling until they were no longer alive. It was manual. It's a lot of labor to do that to someone. Yeah. And it's, it's a very painful way to go. Yeah, it's intense. Yeah. yeah. It takes forever. It takes and forever. And you don't so even know if the person is actually and, like... Wow. And there's 32. 32. Now, the prominent theory that the prosecution ran with is that someone in the group or a few people of the group had killed everyone. And these people were not resisting. They were open to it. They were almost waiting in line, waiting for their turn because they're thinking this is some sort of religious event, right? A ritual, a sacrifice of their own lives, if you will. So these few people went around tying the ropes yeah, around like the others, killing them. And at the very end, probably, they presume, the factory manager was the last one to die. And that's why he hanged himself in the middle of the attic. 
Now, the theory is that Park Soon Ja had to die because she was $80 million in debt and the creditors were knocking on her door. She's probably going to go to prison. So these followers, they wanted to die with her. But there are reasons that that theory is, doesn't make sense. And this is the theory that's legally accepted today. There's some contradictions. There's some questions that even the detectives that worked on this case that agree with this theory, that agree with the final you know, decision, are kind of confused about. So first of all, Park Soon Jae was the first one to die when they looked at time of deaths. This is very unusual. Experts yeah. who study religious group killings say, no. Absolutely not, unless the leader dies from an accidental death or natural causes, like they have a terminal illness or old age, they are never the first one to go. Always alive, Especially in key. an event like this, they will make sure that everybody else is dead before they themselves die. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. Another odd detail was that there were 28 women and four men. 12 of these women were found with evidence of semen in their bodies. So either they were abused by these four men before they passed away, or they voluntarily interacted with men in that attic that has no rooms is an open floor plan and this is august in korea there was no ac up in that attic it's like 90 degrees up there well what the hell was it just going didn't on? make sense especially because pak Sunja, her two sons were in the attic as well as her daughter and mm -hmm. she was found with semen in her body so it just would this mother really voluntarily have these activities in front of her own children well, what? or was this forced upon her it's very confusing, right? Oh, God. Yeah, that's suspicious. Yeah, in that's addition suspicious. to all of that, she had hemorrhaging in her skull, indicating that she was either hit on the head with a blunt force object like a hammer, or her head had been smashed into the wall, which is all very, very strange. She also has a lot of um, like uh, markings, like defensive wounds. So she fought until her very last minute, and if she was the first one to go, her followers are just watching her resist all of this with as much energy as she could muster and they're like you know what keep doing it and we'll go next experts that study a lot of religious groups say that just doesn't make yeah, sense yeah that don't sound religious but at the all prosecutors, bro they're they're honing in on this they're like that's what it was okay religion sometimes doesn't make sense well i don't even want to categorize this as religion but you get it yeah These no i get cults it cults don't really make sense so what can you do? They still and the reason that the whole pattern, scene is though. so bizarre is because it's probably some sort of ritual or something that's symbolic to this cult that we, from the outside, cannot understand. That's now, not like shit about a year bro. later, after this <laughs> case was essentially closed, there was a special committee that was appointed to this case to investigate corruption. And the chairman to that committee was Chairman Kim. And he does not believe that initial theory. He's like, absolutely not. He believes the government just wanted to get this over with as quickly as possible. Yeah. The government didn't want to overcomplicate things. So they chalked it up to something that the public could at least wrap their heads around, which is a religious cult. Kim believes that all 32 people were murdered and they were all murdered in a separate location and not in the attic. He thinks the attic was a dumping grounds for 32 bodies. That makes a little bit more sense. He I thinks all 32 people were killed. So the main reason that he brings up is the factory manager, Lee, the one that was found hanging, the one that had allegedly killed everybody else before he killed himself. Mm -hmm. Kim doesn't believe that this factory worker could have strangled and killed everyone before ending his own life. Why not? First of all, Kim argues that for a man to end 30 people's lives, 31 people's lives, it would have taken at least five, six people, and he thinks that's being conservative. The prosecutor, the government, they also say that Lee, the factory manager, he was the one tightening the ropes around everyone. And Kim is saying, even if he's wearing gloves, do you know how much that's going to take a toll on his hands? And there was nothing on his hands. No evidence no of calluses? swelling that wasn't consistent with decomposition. There was no evidence of abrasions, markings, rope burns. Oh, nah. Nothing. He didn't do that. That's then. very strange. He did not do that. Another part that really, really brings a lot of people to his theory is that there are different markings around everyone technically you could say that all 32 people died of strangulation now the marks should be different everyone else should have different neck marks from the factory manager everyone else was strangled by a rope that was tightened around their neck so that means it would be a full circular ring around their neck yeah meanwhile lee the factory manager was found hanging that's a very different ligature mark so they're saying that mark because you're using the gravity of your body and the weight of your corpse you have this 
this soft spot in your neck that has a little bit of give. So the rope is naturally going to go up into that soft spot and it's going to leave almost this triangular shaped rope in the back. So your ligature mark is not going to go all the way around your neck. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a little bit of gap between your neck and the rope at the top. Yeah. Because yeah. gravity is pulling your body down. Yeah, there's yeah, going to be yeah, a little space. Shouldn't touch in the back. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. He had a full ligature mark. Then he what? A full circle. A full circle. Then he did it. Don't okay. He then didn't, somebody else did somebody it. Somebody killed yeah. him. Now you could argue that maybe someone was choking him, or he tried to choke himself in that manner, and then it didn't work. So then he hanged himself. But it's just very, very strange. There's two. You would need so much pressure to choke yourself enough to leave a like. No, bro. It was made to look like he killed himself. So then he hanged himself. That sounds but the, that's the most it's logical just option. Very, very strange. There's too many what ifs or like oh here's a weird thing that could have happened so kim the chairman theorizes that people killed all 32 people wanted all 32 of them dead for whatever reason and then brought them up to this attic to stage this some sort of mass religious tragedy he also claims that's why their wrists and their ankles were bound the way that they were bound now kim argues that if you are tying someone up okay let's say you're trying to end someone's life mm -hmm. you're gonna tie them up and when you do, you're going to tie them up really tight. Mm -hmm. You're going to make sure that they can't wiggle around or get out of these little bounds. But the way that everyone was tied up was loosely with fabric, like blankets almost, and handkerchiefs. He said, you know what it reminds him of? When you, um, in Korea, we have like these boxes that you tie with like a scarf and you lift it up and you carry it like that. Carry mm -hmm. it by the knot. So he's thinking that all these people were killed at a second location, a separate location. They had their ankles and their arms bound and people were lifting them up like that into the attic. I mean, to kill, to strangle 32 people, that's going to take a lot of manpower. Yeah, a lot. And moving all of them like that's like a it huge wasn't just one team. person yeah and that's why some people debunk his theory and argue for the prosecutor's theory they're saying that you know another thing is if kim is arguing that all these bodies were brought into the attic there's going to be snags and rips on their clothes because even if you're super careful someone's shirt is going to get caught on like a wood plank none of them had any sort of crazy tears or signs of wear on their clothes Another thing that the prosecutors argue is that it took about six to seven officers to bring each body down. Just one body. There's not really, it's not stairs that you can take into the attic. It's like mm -hmm. a ladder. So oh. it, to get these bodies down, and they're saying it must be harder to get them back up. Oh, God. Right. That's true. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I, I don't think that there is one right or wrong answer. That's why I believe Damn. that no one truly is going to know what's going on. Like, no one's going to know the truth of what happened in that attic. It's just these are the two very popular theories right now. I will say the government is on the theory that it was a religious incident. But it's just that's the easiest strange. one. To, yeah. Now, the biggest question that everyone had, though, was before Park Soon Ja died, $18 million of corporate funds vanished. Yeah, where did that so go? So where did it go? First of all, if corporate funds vanish like that, it doesn't seem like someone who's trying to die anytime soon, right? It sounds like someone who's trying to go on the run. Mm -hmm. But where did the $18 million go? Did it go to Park's husband? Where Where is this going? And where did any of the money go? I mean, was she investing the $80 million into different companies? Like, what's going on? So this is where a massive conspiracy theory comes in. And this is a conspiracy theory, and I need to legally state a conspiracy theory is a theory. Just because not, you believe something to be true not, does not make it true. It's just what we've seen people talk about on the internet. Word. And I am just relaying that information to you. I'm, I'm trying so to get there you. is a conspiracy theory mm -hmm. that Park was a pawn. Park was not a religious leader. She wasn't even really the CEO of Five Oceans. Bro, she was being utilized by someone even more powerful because all of the money that she was getting in, it seemed to be going. And there's transfer funds. There's literally slips of transfers that have been approved. Like the government has seen this and they're like, yeah, that actually happened between Five Oceans, the company, and a company called Sam Wu Trading. Sam Wu trading. trading is owned by Yu Byung Un, the billionaire. What? So she's <laughs> sending money to him. Yes. Oh and what God. is he doing? Wait. Exactly. And why would she send all that money to him? Why would she risk her life to send him money? Nah, well, a right lot there, of people boy. think it's connected to his church that he started. So we're going to get into the billionaire story now. 
Yu Byung-un is the leader of, well, he was the leader of the Evangelical Baptist Church in South Korea. And I do need to put a disclaimer that this church is massive. I think there's about 100,000 members in this church globally. God. And there's different sects. Today? Yeah. Today in 2023. Okay. So I feel really good. I feel really safe. I feel really comfortable talking about all this stuff. Uh. I'm very scared. There's a lot of churches in Korea, huh? Yeah. Um, there's actually like a whole reason for it. Whoa. There's actually so many political factors that went into it. Like Korea was in a state of chaos at one point. It's fascinating. But this Wait. church in Korea has a lot know. of subsets. Why? And a Why are there so many churches in Korea? The trauma of Japanese conquest eroded faith in Confucius or Buddhist traditions. Koreans could relate to Israel's sufferings in the Old Testament. No chosen jokes, please. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. I didn't even peep that. I ain't gonna catch it. That was, that was nice. That was nice. That was nice. Okay, 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 okay. Continue, continue. Yeah, by 1945, only 2% of Koreans were Christian. The recent explosive growth accompanied that of the economy. I love, I love learning about these cultures, bro. A lot of these sub. Hold on, go back, go back, go back. Go back. It was in a state of chaos at one point. It's fascinating, but You're this church in Korea has huh? a lot of subsects, and a lot of these sub sex of churches oh, have okay. no connection <laughs> with the billionaire, nor did they have connection with him. Like they broke off and started their own thing. They're mm -hmm. like, we don't like this guy. We like our church. We're going to start a new church. So not everyone that's in the evangelical Baptist church is bad, okay, nor okay. is it really categorized as a cult. I'm just going to call it an organization for now because I'm legally a little bit cautious right now. But it's very interesting. He starts this church and it's speculated that Park was a member of this church and she started Five Oceans to provide Sam Mu trading with money, the leader of her church with millions of dollars, but why and how and is this even true and what's going on? Mm. So let's talk about Yu byung -un. Now, these days, Yu byung -un is a household name for all the wrong reasons because of this Hewar Ferry tragedy and the way that he was hunted down by the police and the way that he died. Everybody knows his name. Yeah. But keep in mind, back in the day, nobody knew him. He was known as Korea's billionaire without a face. He was incredibly private. Nobody even knows how he became a billionaire. That's how private he was. Like other people, you could be like, oh, well, they started Amazon. They started this, right? This guy, all we know is what he's told his church about his childhood. Which he is? said ever since he was a kid, he wanted to be Michelangelo. He wanted okay. to be the next big artist. He said he felt it in his bones. Is that why that he, he was, was fascinated someone with Someone that these was artistic, someone that was creative, that could speak paintings through and art this and kind stuff. of language. That was his ultimate dream. But how could he do that when he was born into this poor village family? He was a rather sickly child. Early on, he fought a rather um, tough battle of tuberculosis, and it seems like he never fully recovered. He went through school hoping, you know, I'm just going to find a job to support my family. That's like how a lot of poor village kids his age were thinking. But in high school, he met a group of American Christian missionaries, and he said his entire life changed. Not only did he want to get into religion, not only did he become religious, but he wanted to spread the word, which is um, arguably the more controversial part of Christianity. But he said that his whole life mission was to help save people, basically. And he was a little bit of an apocalyptic sect, meaning that he felt like the world was going to end anytime soon. So he needed people to be saved soon because if Yo. the world ends in five years and you're not saved, you're out of luck. You're going to be in hell. Why do you now, care? He did have a lot. Of I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That part Loki always bothered me about Christianity, bro. Like I understand you want to save your fellow human, but bro, what if they don't want to be saved? What you going to do? Kill them? Like, <laughs> I understand. We got to spread the word of God. If somebody walks up on me and says, hey, bro, you're going to hell. If you don't believe in Jesus, nigga, that's not gonna convince me. <laughs> like, why do you care about what I do with my beliefs? That makes me suspicious of you. Who the hell are you? I don't know you. <laughs> but maybe that's just me though. I'm a suspicious person. I ain't gonna catch you. Everything is a scam. <laughs> and anytime soon. So he needed people to be saved soon because if the world ends in five years and you're not saved, you're out of luck, you're going to be in hell. 
Now, he did have a lot of charisma ever since he was a kid. Mm. So he meets a young woman, they get married, and with his father-in-law, he starts a church. And everybody is poor. The whole Yu family, super broke, okay? They've got no money. They're in debt when they start this church, but they're so passionate about their religious teachings. They call the church the Evangelical Baptist Church, a.k.a. EBC, or the Salvation Sect. The church, again, like I said, later splits up, so not everyone in EBC is bad or associated with Pyongyang. Okay. The church is interesting. The Salvation Sect, his sect, is very interesting and unique. Their teachings are wild. So Pyongyang, the billionaire, told his followers that you earn the right to heaven no matter how bad your sins are. You could kill someone, you could rip a whole village, and you would get to heaven as long as you follow me and you are saved. <laughs> You only need to be saved once in your lifetime. It's like a get out of jail free card. So most Christians do not believe that. Yeah. They feel like you have to live your whole life trying to prevent <laughs> sin and trying not to sin because that's how you show like you were worthy, right? But he's saying, hey, you could have killed 10 people, but I save you today. You can go on to kill 50 people. There's no take backsies. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like I can't take back your salvation. It's like what the hell? Yeah, it was, um, it's an interesting concept it's that like most Christians absolutely despise. Yeah, bro. Many Christians that belong to more mainstream groups stated that Yu byung un and his followers were lawless criminals who weren't upholding their faith. Oh, the Presbyterian Church of Korea officially categorized Yu byung un's church as a violation of Christian belief, and they straight up called them heretics. Damn. One of the pastors said, he's a cult leader. He is defied as some sort of Moses or Messiah amongst his followers, and they give him money as he pleases. Yu byung un and his followers, they passionately refute this. They say, no, no, no. You hate us because you don't understand us. Because <laughs> we don't practice the same way that you practice. That's the reason you hate us. One very fascinating thing about this group is how reclusive they are. I mean, the whole church is shrouded in secrecy, which is kind of unheard of. I feel like most religious organizations that don't feel all that religious don't sue me but they're kind of wild like even jms think of all the public events they held all the videos that have been found online of you know jms out there giving his sermons and his crisp white tuxedos but not this church this church was so so secretive like in what way i mean it's a major religious organization with tens if not hundreds of thousands of followers and yet nobody knows what's going on in there they do have some weird things that they did, though. Well, I don't want to say weird, but remember how Yu byung the billionaire, was very sick as a child? Apparently, he taught his followers that germs were really bad. So he stated he hates how other Christians pray before meals and let their little white spicks of spit fall into their food. Yeah, so you had a thing about not praying before meals. Nigga, that is weird. <laughs> Interesting take, I That's tell you. I've hell. never heard that before. You're but Yu byung -un was not phased by you... all these other Christians basically shunning him and his church. How they deemed it a cult, but byung -un didn't care. Because within just two decades of starting his church, he was a billionaire. Two decades. Where he collected billions of dollars? Let me tell you, okay? You're thinking billions of dollars in church donations? That's crazy. Not exactly. No, that Pyong Un was a businessman before he was a religious leader. The Evangelical Baptist Church ran very differently from other organizations that we've talked about. <laughs> Let me explain. Oh my God, I'm the story so of like Lim. Lim is a South Korean man who went to his mom's house and saw another box of these supplements that she had just recently become so obsessed with. She's like, these supplements are going to save my life and they're going to save yours. Yeah. He didn't really understand why she was into squalene. It was like made from shark livers. But maybe that's what happens when you get... Whoa! Whoa! Shark liver? Hold on. Isn't that the billionaire? He had shark liver in his gullet. No, not gullet. <laughs> I don't know why I really wanted to say gullet. Gullet is such a nasty word. It almost gives me the same vibe as like the M word, moist. I'm not saying it again. I'm so sorry. If you want to unsubscribe, I understand. <laughs> I'm canceling myself. <laughs> Y'all remember? Wait, no, nobody remembers. That was way back in the day when folks were saying cat piss would cure cancer, boy. Like, who is believing that? I mean, apparently a lot of people. Imagine somebody walking up on you and saying, yeah, bro, I got turtle poop. You smear it on your face, clear skin. I feel like... <laughs> It's not too much of a stretch to believe somebody will put turtle poop on their face, bro. You got folks ingesting whale semen. Anything is possible. <laughs> Anything. <laughs>
Evangelical Baptist Church ran very differently from other organizations that we've talked about. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> I mean, not all of them. Let me explain by telling you the story of Lim. Who Lim the hell is, is a Lim? South Korean man oh, who yeah. went to his mom's house you told and me. saw <laughs> another box of these supplements that she had just recently become so obsessed with. She's like, these supplements are going to save my life and they're going to save yours. He didn't really understand why she was into squalene. It was like made from shark livers. Mm. But maybe that's what happens when you get older. You start looking for ways to stay healthy. I guess. He didn't realize it was too late <laughs> that she was being scammed. Not just scammed, but meticulously targeted, manipulated, and defrauded. Oh. Mrs. Lim, his mother, was known in the area as being rich, alone, and very sweet. You know, her kids would check up on her, but they, they're all adults. They have families of their own. She would spend most of her days alone. A group of strangers appeared at her door, asking her questions and helping her around in the kitchen, giving her massages, giving her tips on what to eat to feel more energetic. She loved the conversation. I mean, it was just nice to talk to someone. Aww. But the visits became more and more frequent. And they started telling her that if you ever plan to be saved, you know, because you don't have much time left, our religion is pretty easy. You know, other religions so complex. You have to go through this whole process where you have to repent for your sins. and You got to do all of this and then you got to do all this good <laughs> deeds. You don't have to do that. You don't have to read the Bible every day. Good deeds, like... You simply have to join our church and you'll be saved. What about like pay they us? They told her it was founded by a billionaire named Yu Byung Un and his father in law, and they were special. What do you mean they were special? It's hard to explain, but Mrs. Lim, we'll drop off some sermons and you'll see. He's, he's different. And you know, when you're listening to the sermons and you feel this enormous wave of emotions come to you, you need to write that time down. So. They were in the practice of writing down the exact time that they got saved. So Mrs. Lim listens to the tapes alone in her condo and it hit her. She feels these emotions. She wants to cry and she writes down the time and she's like, I've been saved. This is what salvation feels like. But you know what else salvation feels like? Squalene shark liver pills. Yeah, the church sold it. They recommended it and sold it for salvation and they sold it for $1,300 a box. They also sold knickknacks for like $2,000, a jewelry box made out of the shittiest quality material. Like USB. They sold everything. It's like an MLM inside of a church. <laughs> this is not a regular organization that we're talking about. This is straight up QVC MLM meets a church. Bro. Bro. Mrs. Lim bought box after box after box after box, as well as a bunch of other things that the church insisted that she needed and sold at insanely ridiculous prices. And she couldn't go to the market and be like, you know what? Your squalene is $1,300 and I can find squalene for $10? No, because that's not blessed. Okay, you need to buy this one. They were cluttering up her home. A lot of it's speculated that she spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on these items. God. But the oh real salvation God. happened when the salvation sect offered her a rare opportunity not only to get rich but also save the world. They said that they were going to create a business that was coming up with this top-notch medical facility. So they need funds for it and you're going to get returns because once the hospital is up and running, I mean, it's going to be a lot of profit. I mean, think of how great that idea is. And you're saving lives. She forked over half a million dollars in cash to make oh it happen. My. She invested half a million dollars, never told her sons and daughters. That was a majority of her remaining assets. In exchange, she received a formal official note. Is this sounding similar? Is this sounding familiar to anything? Yes. A document explaining the transfer of funds and how she's going to be paid back with returns. And the company that signed this note was the Sam Wu Trading Group. Oh, that trading group would file for bankruptcy and they would have two hundred twenty five million dollars in debt. Oh, my God. They would leave Mrs. Lim with nothing. <laughs> I think even worse than losing the money was she felt completely abandoned in life. She eventually passed away in 2008 and it said that she was never the same after this betrayal. Now, she was just one of the many people that fell victim to the Salvation Sect. And the Salvation Sect is so fascinating that, hey, they're still around to this day. And the way that they function is bizarre. So listen, listen, self, 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 self. Uh, I know you're probably wondering what the hell happened. <laughs> I had to go mow the lawn, bro, and it is hot outside what was i talking about before i left oh 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 listen listen pap 
Impact Nation. I am just a bystander. Everything I say cannot be used against me. I plead the fourth, fifth, and eighth, so do not come for me. Word, word. I don't want to go there, but these hands is rated E. Well, no, they're not really. I can't hit a woman, bro. But if you ask my hands to discriminate, it'll be a little bit confused, so be careful. <laughs> I don't think the sect is called Pac Nation, bro. What did she say it was? Hold on. And it said that she was never the same after this betrayal. Damn. Now, she was just one Wouldn't of the many either. people that fell victim to the Salvation Sect. And the Salvation Sect is so Salvation fascinating. Sect. That, hey, they're still around to this day. And the way that they function is bizarre. Strange. So this church is a church, their sermons, but they also ask all of the church members to invest in the companies that are basically run by the church. The executives of these companies are run by church members. Most of the employees are church members, allegedly. All of this is kind of, it's like a networking event. Yeah. A professor who studied Yu byung -un and his religion said, Yu byung -un preaches that corporate activities are equivalent to religious activities. He used his followers as a tool to bloat his own wealth. That's crazy. A pastor that made it out of the salvation sex said, Yu byung -un expanded his business through a system of believers and exploitation of labor. I mean, it's crazy. Imagine if Jeff Bezos started a religion and asked you to donate all your money into his companies because you follow him spiritually. And everything was set up like a pyramid-like <laughs> structure of dozens Yo. of subsidiaries under his holding company. Like shell company after shell company after shell company after shell company. A lot of the times, Yu byung -un's name wasn't even listed as a major shareholder or someone who had heavy interest in the success of these businesses. Most of the times, they would be listed under followers' names that he indirectly controlled, allegedly, or his own children's names or other family members. But it's alleged that Yu byung -un was the mastermind behind every single company in this web of companies. I mean, he became the billionaire. Yeah, he is the mastermind. So the way that it would work is that a new company would come up, Company A, and church believers are now investing in Company A and being promised big fat returns. Mr. Yu byung -un might not have any direct shares in Company A. He's not a shareholder of Company A, but the largest shareholder of Company A is Company B. And Company B is a subsidiary of Holdings Company C, which Yu byung -un's two oh, sons were controlling shareholders my of. God. So that's why a lot of people say he's not the de facto owner of any of these businesses, but there is a connection, let's like, be real. Like, come on now. Uh, so yeah, stop. on paper, he might not even own Company A or have shares or be the CEO Shit. of Company A. Shit, on paper, I would low-key say he is the owner, regardless, bro. You know what I'm saying? If he wasn't controlling it, he wouldn't be the only billionaire. But he is the only billionaire. I mean, it's going to somebody and it's him. <laughs> He might not even own Company A or have shares or be the CEO of Company A, but let's he's profiting off of Company A. Oh, God. Now, one of these companies that started very, very early on, um, before even I believe the Odeyang incident, was a ferry company. They made boats and they originally started oh, as just ferry. being entertainment ferry boats on the Han River. So I think during the Olympics like in Seoul, they were just taking people around on these cute little ferry rides. And because Yu byung and the billionaire had so many connections in government, he was able to get all these permits and all these licenses until they became like a full-blown maritime community, a company where they had cargo ships, like all of that. What? All of that. Cargo ships? Some former members of the church have come out to say that Yu byung -un, maybe not directly, but a lot of them were asked to volunteer to help build these ferries with no knowledge what of how hell? to build ferries. How do you build It's alleged that in the beginning, um, this ferry company... Would Hey, you're gonna build a boat. It's alleged that it's in the beginning, um, this ferry company would use free labor from church members who had no idea how to build ferries like what? just so they could cut down on costs. It's also speculated that most of the employees that worked at this ferry company were like 99% the church. So Oh, and that's how the, the, the other, that ferry that killed 300 people, the Sherwell, the Sherwell ferry. Build ferries just so they could cut down on costs. It's also speculated that most 
of the employees that worked at this ferry company were like 99% the church. So if anyone had any safety concerns, they would just get fired. And if you were part of the church, you probably wouldn't have any safety concerns. Yeah. It's speculated. Because three of their ferries would end up colliding with the Mapo Bridge during a flood, killing 13 passengers and losing one passenger who is still considered missing. Damn. And this is before Sewar. Yeah. So Tamu it. Trading was investigated but formally cleared of liability. But it's just fascinating to think about considering what we're going to talk about on Wednesday's episode. Oh my now, God. A former follower of this we church have to watch Wednesday's said, working episode. hard at these companies that were run by the church was equivalent to salvation. They considered that Bible study. They considered that singing the gospel. That was considered an act of worship. We didn't have to pray anymore. We just had to do three hours at the factory. This and these are crazy, not bro. small, cute little home businesses. These are massive ones, like Chonejin Marine, the ones that owned Sewar Ferry. Pretty sizable company, okay? They had companies that sold toys to the general public. Like, you would never even know that this company is run by a church. You're just like, that's a cute toy, let me buy it. Yeah. They were the sole distributors of a very fancy chocolate brand called Dubov and Gala. It's like a French chocolate brand. It's yeah. super old. It's said Dubois? to have been a favorite of Marie Antoinette. But they are the sole distributor in America for that chocolate brand. Hmm. Yeah. The family owned an entire village in France. They had a company that sold green tea, a company that sold enema kits to cleanse people's bodies via the butt, companies that sold organic milk, makeup, auto parts, special paint for nuclear plants that have to endure radiation. They had a real estate company, the maritime boat companies. I mean, they had their fingers dipped in everything. Oh, Craft companies, tourist toys companies. It was like a spider web of shell companies and subsidiaries. Oh, what nah. They would do is oh, nah. This nigga had his fingers in every pot of the pie. From a business standpoint, word. From an ethical standpoint, like, come on, bro. Clear plants that have to endure radiation. They had a real estate company, the maritime boat companies. I mean, they had their fingers dipped Were they in all everything. successful Craft companies? companies, tourist toys companies. It was like a spider web of shell companies and subsidiaries. What they would do is they would just buy companies that were about to be bankrupt, put in a bunch of church members, allegedly, and ask people to invest in it. It said that they were involved with at least 70 companies on three different continents. God. Some in their own names, others through other people's names. It was so, so complicated. So complicated. They even own one of the biggest organic lavender farms in Southern California. What? So this is not like a cute little business idea that a church makes. It made the Yu family one of the richest families in South Korea, but hardly anyone knew about them. They were not always in the papers like the Samsung Chebars, the Korean Air Chebars. They were the billionaires with no face. They flew under their radar, but their power, influence, and money is so terrifying to think about. Mm. So the families would get paid millions of dollars through this company, even if it wasn't just through the shares. And how do you do that, you ask? Yeah. The companies would make up random... Okay, I don't want to say this legally speaking, but in my opinion, they would make up random reasons that they had to pay the you billionaire family millions of dollars. So the ferry company, for example, allegedly paid Yu's eldest son $1.4 million for the right to use the name to one of the ferries. The other Yu family son apparently was paid for the rights to the name Sewar, the name of the ferry that sank and killed hundreds of people that we're talking about on Wednesday. I don't know for sure if the company paid to use that name, but apparently he owned the trademark for it. So they would make up these, I don't want to say false because I guess they're accurate, but these almost unbelievable from an ethical sense yeah. reasons why they had to pay the Yu family millions of dollars. They're like, the Yu family named one of our products, so we must pay them $2 million in royalties. I never heard of no company ever willingly doing that, bro. Stop! Stop! That's like the company Disney paying somebody money because they had a name that was similar to a movie that Disney made. But Disney would sue that person for having that name. <laughs> it's their God-given name. Disney used the name in their movies, you might get sued. But that's how these companies work. I promise you. I promise you. They're like, the Yu family named one of our products, so we must pay them $2 million in royalties. Why? Like, come on, bro. And that would be considered a business uh, expense on the final papers. It just seemed like the family had a million ways to make a million dollars. And all of it seemed to fall into morally gray territory, depending on who you ask. It's most so of business, early on but in their like... church... Pyongun acquired a failing business, Samu Trading, and then he starts adding all these new businesses. And one of the companies that was 
funneling massive amounts of money into Samu Trading was Five Oceans. Mm. So once that connection mm. was made, Yu Byung-un's assistant was arrested. Because oh. all the funds that passed from Odeyang to Samu Trading all went through his assistant, and she was basically thrown under the bus. Damn. It came out that when Park was in debt, she was being investigated, she was on the run, and she asked Yu Byung-un, the billionaire that she's connected to, for help, and allegedly, he refused. There was another note found at the crime scene. That's to be expected, A note that key. said, Sam Wu is also suffering. Indicating someone gave her the news that Sam Wu Trading could not give her money because they too were suffering. Mm. Now, this is where it gets very tricky. You would think, okay, that's one and done. They're connected. He must be involved in something illegal, right? Oh Yu Byung-un was arrested in 1991 for the Five Oceans incident. But because the actual deaths of these 32 people were ruled a mass suicide, Pyongyang cannot be connected to it. And the prosecutors alleged that they couldn't find any link with him and the deaths. I'm not saying the Five Oceans company or the scams, just the deaths. Years mm. after 32 people died, Yu byung was, this was a rare occasion, he was interviewed, and he said, I just feel really insulted that people link me to the accident. Do you know how I feel? I feel like I'm a woman living in a small village and one day I suddenly got sexually assaulted. And it's really unfair, you know? But I can't talk about it because, you know, Korean culture, they'll just have more rumors and it gets out of control and then I'll be the one at fault. That's how I feel. Oh, that what is, a, is that analogy? Like, I don't know. It's the, I, like, first of all, what? 32 people back, die. Okay, second of all, but you're I, not like, a woman that's been sexually assaulted. You're... A rich man in a deeply patriarchal society. So shut up. Oh God, shut <laughs> like, up. Like what a bizarre thing to say. I I but Yu like Byung Un is not connected to the That's Five been... Oceans incident legally. Even though he's not, there are a lot of open questions though. Technically, the police have decided what they think happened and they think that it was mass suicide. But I don't know, just these loose ends. I don't think anyone will really know what happened in that. Too attic. many loose ends, bro. It's not a closed case. Yu was can't convicted be. on charges of defrauding his church members. Prosecutors stated that he uses church funds and property to expand his own business and wealth. They said that he committed habitual fraud under the mask of religion. How much time he did denied he denied those charges, but he was found guilty and thrown in prison for four years. Oh, wow. When he got out, similar to what happens to most people that have a lot of admiration for them. His followers only believed in him more. They believed that he was wrongly persecuted. Yeah. Yu byung even recorded a sermon to his followers that said, things are tough for us right now. Other people treat us like koles, like rags, like dish rags. But we need to remember, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil nah, things against you. Nah, he played you it so, so smart. Blessed are you. This nigga is Rejoice beyond be manipulative, bro. Oh my god. I will state again for the record, the prosecutor's office did confirm that no connection between Yu Byung Un and the Odeyang incident with the 32 people in the attic. There was no connection. He's not legally held accountable. But there's more. Can we hold him After accountable? After Samu <laughs> trading files for bankruptcy, the Yu family business is still in business and they're still continuing to operate at least like 30 different companies allegedly. According to Chebar.com, they still had 30 different subsidiaries and had 13 big holding companies in other areas like the US, Hong Kong, and France. Damn. And after the Odeyang scandal, people originally had no idea who this Yu byung billionaire was. They were like, what? A church billionaire? This is crazy. Then the incident puts him in national spotlight. And after the scandal, if you could even call it a scandal because it's literally mass death, but the family spent tens of millions of dollars on PR, on rebranding Mr. Yu. He stopped even recognizing the fact that he was a part of a religious group. He refused to acknowledge that he was a preacher, a church leader, a founder of a church. Instead, he became known as his pseudonym, Ahe. What is that? Ahe in traditional Korean means little child, which if we're going to put our tin foil hats on, I know, I know. If we're heading into rich people conspiracy territory, what a questionable name, okay? Oh, God. But they reinvented him as some sort of profound artistic genius. The family donated millions of dollars to the Louvre, and he has a gold plaque on the wall with his pseudonym Ahe on there, as of right now still. And... No way. Hold on. The Louvre? 
I don't know why I just said it like that. Bro, is it this? Why does that shit look so ornate? I'm thinking this is gonna be an actual like plaque on a wall. This is like a whole situation, my nigga. Du fond de dona. Description. South Korean Yu Byung Eon alias Ahe has his name engraved on the walls of the Louvre as a patron. Date May 2014. Oh my god, rotten mango. He's spitting facts. Actually facts. Hold on, hold on, go back, go back, go back. Millions of dollars to the Louvre, and he has a gold plaque on the wall with his pseudonym Ahe on there, as of right now, still. He actually and does. <laughs> This shit crazy. Okay. Yeah, they started um, asking massive art institutions to show his pieces. He held an exhibit at the Grand Central Terminal. Oh, his own artwork. Oh yeah, his own, oh. not a, not his collection, his oh. artwork. Was his artwork even that fire? I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking it's his collection of artwork. Yo, yo. Show his pieces. He held an exhibit at the Grand Central Terminal. Oh, his own artwork. Oh yeah. His own, oh. not a, not his collection, oh, yeah. <laughs> his artwork. Oh, so he paints or what? He takes pictures outside of his window. Oh, it's a photo. Yeah. It's just a photo. Yeah. Oh, wait, let me tell you. Okay. Is it good? <laughs> Bro, I'm about to go on a whole rant. Okay. <sighs> he held an exhibit at the Grand Central Terminal in New no. York City in 2011, which uh -huh. is speculated to have cost the family at least a million or two million dollars it's speculated that the family spent another six million dollars plus to exhibit his work at the palace of versailles side note the london symphony orchestra played during an event at this exhibit and they premiered a new piece symphony number no. six ahe named after him and a tribute to him a billionaire with subpar photography skills that allegedly saying. paid his way into this exhibit like wow. bro, the, the pictures are not even that fire I take pictures and I could have taken that. Like, bro, I'm telling y'all, bro, money really talks out here in these streets. Cuh. Orchestra played during an event at this exhibit and they premiered a new piece, Symphony Number no. 6 Ahe, named after him and a tribute to him, a billionaire with subpar photography skills that subpar. allegedly paid his way into this exhibit. Wow. Oh, God, the family so seems par. very, very litigation and sue happy, but I said what I said. Art is a personal opinion, and I don't think it's that great, okay? Oh, it's no, mediocre agree. at best, and that is... You can't legally get me for saying I don't enjoy some art, okay? <laughs> Having money does not mean that you are talented at everything that you try, and that's okay. That is he took okay. blurry landscape photos out of his multi-million dollar estate window and he called it art. So he said that he was inspired by his prison sentence staring out the window for four days and he would see the <sighs> changes in nature and the world. <laughs> It was called Through My Window. Another one was called Finding the Extraordinary and the Ordinary or something. But it's said that after this PR rebrand, Yu byung became even more mysterious. It's alleged that he went into his tortured artist role. He stopped allowing photographs unless it was from his back or his side or his camera was covering the majority of his face. So there's not a lot of pictures you can find on him or his children. The whole family is very, very mysterious, which is crazy because Yu byung niece is actually married to one of the most influential names in k-pop and nobody knew who jyp and we're gonna get into it wait, because wait, 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 wait jyp is married to the family to his niece jyp so you hold on jyp i've i've heard of jyp before but from where to his niece what? So Yu byung -un's brother's daughter is JYP's second wife and they're still currently married and during this Hewar Ferry accident it, it got really crazy and we're going to get into it and I'm not saying that he's associated with any of their shady business or religious dealings. You can't even pick, find a picture of his wife online. They're wow. very mysterious. Yeah. Huh. Well at least I couldn't find a picture of his wife online. Well if very, you couldn't very find it. People. I can't but, find it. I would anyway, be able to find shit. Ahe, the new man, the new billionaire, described himself on his website as an inventor, entrepreneur, philanthropist, environment activist, martial artist. By the way, he and most of his kids were black belt. Taekwondo, I believe. 
painter, sculptor, poet, and photographer. His website stated the exhibitions were a way to increase public awareness of the beauty of nature and the need to preserve the natural environment. And it's fascinating to see the switch up that even mainstream news outlets have made after he was associated with this Hiller Ferry tragedy. So after the Five Oceans incident, that was just well known in Korea. It didn't become international news. He rebranded. Everyone just knew him as this mysterious billionaire from South Korea, this artist that was giving back to nature. People, big, big institutions would write things like, The Economist wrote this, Ahe's forensic attention to detail reveals the stoicism, dignity, and minor dramas of the animals going about their daily business and raises these pictures into the realm of poetry. Oh a my kind God. of surrealist representation of a single day. Yo, take his meat out really your mouth. like he's lived so many different lives. Yes. Like, they're writing this about blurry pictures taken outside a billionaire's window. Hold on, hold on. Let me look at these pictures for myself because I do trust her opinion because from what I've seen, she has told none but facts. But let me give my personal little photographer's opinion. Word, word. Let's go find some of these pictures, bro. This is actually blurry. No way, actually. Like, it's actually blurry. <laughs> what about that? It's literally just blur. A blur of green. Is this just water? <laughs> like, this is true. <laughs> you know, art is personal. That is a blatant display of how much money talks, bro. A single day. It's really like he's lived so many different lives. Yes. Like, they're writing this about blurry pictures taken outside a billionaire's window. Yeah. I too would expect some poetry if I had that much money and my compound was worth that much. <laughs> now get this. During this time, it's like alleged that Yubi Yu was still running tens of companies and still getting investments. And I don't know if he starts asking these companies to purchase his art or if they volunteer to, but he started selling his art to these subsidiary companies. Nigga was selling his art to himself. Sometimes for as much as $22,000 a photo. And they would buy a lot of them. Each company would pay for tens of thousands of dollars for his art. And it's alleged that part of the reason that this Howard Ferry even sank in the first place was because of his art. Not fully, but it was a factor. Was? Yeah. So... I totally get it. Sometimes you want to benefit all your friends' companies. And if this is a good investment, why not, right? But there's no such record of his art selling for as much or for anything in the real world. Like it was never auctioned off at Christie's or Sotheby's for any price. So very little evidence that his art had actual market value. An art... <laughs> Essentially posted a picture on Instagram. Then he liked it from his 300 alternate accounts. <laughs> How do you get any feeling of accomplishment from that, bruh? You just took some pictures and then had the companies that you own pay for them pictures. <laughs> You're losing money. Are you not? Or am I tripping on that? For a so-called business genius, bruh, that don't sound very business-like. Or for anything in the real world. Like it was never auctioned off at Christie's or Sotheby's for any price so very little evidence that his art had actual market value an art curator in new york city said my informed opinion as a museum creator for the last curator for the last 15 years is that there is no market for these works at any price you couldn't even give them away <laughs> they honestly are. for free they so it seemed like another one of those morally great <laughs> areas of like what's going on here I mean, I think you and I both know what's going on, but legally, yeah. I can't tell you what's going on. Nah, but now, I know. one of those companies... I'm not compelled legally to do shit. <laughs> I'll tell you what's going on. He's scamming. <laughs> but I is lying, bro. Straight to everybody's faces, like... <laughs> including his own? I don't get it. I just don't get it, bro. So it seemed like another one of those morally gray areas of, like, what's going on here? I mean, I think you and I both know what's going on, but legally, I can't tell you what's going on. Me neither. Now, one of those companies that was I said to have spent legal... over $100,000 on purchasing yeah. his art Disclaimer. was the failing, financially struggling boat company that owned this Hayward Ferry that we're going to talk about on Wednesday. Okay. A lot of corruption. Now, he is known as Ahe, the billionaire without the face. And then in 2014, this Hayward Ferry sinks, killing 300 plus people. Financial records detailed that the parent company that owned this ferry that was controlled by the Yu family, well, at least his two sons, 
they were spending millions of dollars and giving it to the Yu family and spending about $2 per employee to train them on what happens in the case of a major emergency. $2 in training. The entire boat capsized and nobody knew what to do. And there were so many reasons. The boat was not up to regulation. There were so many factors on why it sank and why it was as disastrous as it was. And the prosecutors, they wanted Yu byung the billionaire, to go down for the ferry. But the ever mysterious billionaire was nowhere to be found all of a sudden. Bro, 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 bro. What does two dollars of training even look like? like <laughs> what would the training consist of? Alright, you put on this life jacket. <laughs> So like we have to watch the Wednesday episode because how did all of them die? Were there no life jackets of any sorts? And the prosecutors, they wanted Yu byung the billionaire, to go down for the ferry. But the ever mysterious billionaire was nowhere to be found all of a sudden. Because he was dead or what? And around 2014, when the ferry went down and people were looking for Yu byung and his whole family, Oh dae kept coming up too. Because people were like, wait a minute. Who is this guy? Who is this guy that we've never heard of that opens this company that's apparently part of a Chebar family? And why does his name keep coming up about a mass incident that happened years ago, decades ago, where 32 people were found dead in an attic? Mm. And all these connections were being made. Oh, so the shit. whole family is nowhere to be seen. They were summoned to report to the prosecution's office they never came okay they were being questioned for embezzlement tax evasion amongst other things it was really bad this was actually the biggest manhunt to date in south korea hunting down yu byung un and the yu family members and it's actually become a sore spot over 10,000 officers were deployed it was an internationally coordinated struggle to get everyone because a few of his kids were overseas one of his kids is married to an american citizen lives in the u.s i think his daughter lives in paris so that's where she was apprehended and it was just bad they're just as elusive as their father i guess they learn from the best oh, <laughs> they're not man. like the rich kids on social media flaunting their wealth literally nobody even knew what they really looked like so the kids get taken in most of them and mr Yu is still nowhere to be found until he's found dead yeah. He was found dead a week after they searched his holiday home and he was found dead in the apricot field outside of his holiday home a week later. So the police are like, what's going on? And the public is like, are you dumb? And the whole thing about this being a religion, while they were searching all of Mr. Yu's properties, he had a 115 acre compound where his church sat. They had freshwater farms for fish. They were really into organic farming it's kind of giving you know one of those organizations but there was a banner outside where these believers sat in front of the why did I, a tear just came out my eyeball why <laughs> am i hungry or something like the public is like are you dumb and the whole thing about this being a religion, while they were searching all of Mr. Yu's properties, he had a 115 acre compound where his church sat. They had freshwater farms for fish. They were really into acres. organic farming. It's kind of giving, you know, one of those organizations. Yeah. But there was a banner a outside where these believers sat in front of the gate to block the 6,000 officers that were trying to storm the place. And the banner read, we'll protect Yu byung un even if 100,000 church members are all arrested. You said there were 6,000? Officers. 6,000 officers? They came in with, like, ground digging technology because they thought that he would have an underground bunker, tunnels for escaping, like, movie style, 6,000 officers were involved. I'm sure some of them were delegated to paperwork and not at the site, but 6,000 officers were involved in the search of his 115-acre church compound. That is insane. Wow. And in wow, total, wow. I think 10,000 officers were involved in they, the manhunt for Yu byung -un. They still didn't find One church member until even he screamed, died. I'm ready to be killed in protection for Yu byung -un. So, yeah, I mean, they don't say that they're a cult, but, like, that's kind of crazy, okay? Now, the extent of Yu's influence, like power, and money is truly terrifying. There was even a list going around while he was on the run called the Yu byung -un list with a bunch of names that he had been rubbing shoulders with, and they were all people in powerful positions of politics, government, media positions. So, JYP, 
He is married to the niece of Yu byung Un. So Yu's brother's daughter is married to JYP. And just as mysterious as the rest of the family, truly, like most people that I found online didn't even know that JYP was married a second time. But again, the marriage doesn't mean that he's connected to anything shady. I don't want anyone to think that I'm saying that. But this was a topic of conversation that came up. I mean, he's married though. JYP was in such hot water after the Sewar Ferry tragedy. And I mean, typically, once you marry somebody, you kind of just share knowledge with each other. But who knows what type of marriage this was? This is a completely different ballpark. He is married to the niece of Yu byung Un. So Yu's brother's daughter is married to JYP. And just as mysterious as the rest of the family, truly, like most people that I found online didn't even know that JYP was married a second time. But again, the marriage doesn't mean that he's connected to anything shady. I don't want anyone to think that I'm saying that. Okay. But this was a topic of conversation that came up. JYP was in such hot water after the Sewar Ferry tragedy and this manhunt for the Yu family started. He had to put out a statement, well, a tweet rather, that said, the fact that my wife is related to the owner of a problematic company is irrelevant. So is this a country that can just say whatever they want now? In relation to my faith, you would know if you listen to all my interviews that I've done and the music that I've put out for the past couple of years, I've studied a lot of different religions, but I have no religion. I hope that no more baseless rumors start coming out. Due to this incident, JYP was investigated for fraudulent funds. There was speculation that he was also like a subsidiary that belonged to the church and maybe there were church funds going in and out of this and um, it was proven to be false. The company even said on record that not even a single penny will show illegal funds have flowed into JYP. Mm. They also said that they will be taking strict action against people circulating or creating rumors and lies. So even the prosecutor's office, JYP, I mean, I there were a few none. of them on the Yu byung list, the prosecutor's office. So the it's scope the of his standard. influence amongst the elites in Korea, I mean, is unknown. It's a random homeless now, man. Now, he dies. They find a dead body one mile away from his oh, little holiday dies. home in an apricot orchard. And the police are like, this is the body of a man without a home. Nah. So it's like a what? Cover up? You think they don't care or either the, okay the general public is saying this level of incompetence doesn't exist oh god right. yeah so, so it sounds sketchy right? yes. it sounds very sketchy yes. they said also a lot of things because you know why would there be a rotting corpse of a man without a home wearing an italian made jacket yeah. with yu byung book next to him with shark liver pills yeah yeah. Yeah, the like shark just liver, a random I, man I without a home, that. and it's so close to his holiday home. Stop. Like, why would you even think that? That why would that even come to your mind? I have no words, right? Is he? They, they were forced to run DNA on the body and use brother, and they realized it was a familial match. Now they released that it was a familial match. They also ran fingerprints, but this is where it gets crazy. South Koreans were like, "But you just told us his body was so badly decomposed. There are rumors that his head was separated from his body." And that you thought, because he was so badly decomposed, How did you run that he was a man without a home. You didn't even think he was Yu byung -un. How were his fingerprints still intact? Oh, God. Exactly. That is suspicious. There was never really a response to that. But did they match the fingerprint? Yeah, they said it is Yu byung -un. We matched oh. DNA but, and fingerprints. But, but they're like, how did you match fingerprints? Yeah, they, oh, yeah. Like, they so can they always say that. The first yeah, time, yeah, 100%. No, no, no. We don't know if they went back and matched fingerprints. Yeah. They're just like, we did. Yeah, like they could have just oh, said that. Okay. We don't know. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> what? Like, we're just going off what they tell us to trust. I mean, it just seems like the dumbest thing ever. And I'm not trying to say I'm a conspiracy theorist and I think he's alive and this is a fake body, but it's just bizarre. Headline. It's okay. I'll say it. I think he's alive and that's a fake body, bro. Come on. Bro, he has a billion dollars. Do you understand the world that opens once you reach that billion dollar status? I can't even comprehend the type of shit you can get into with a billion dollars. Bro, at a million dollars, I might just blow up half the planet. <laughs> That's crazy. I would not blow up half the planet with a million dollars, okay? And just to make that clear, all you need is a million dollars, bro. You just dish that out to certain police officers in charge. You're straight, my nigga. Like, you control the narrative. We gotta find him. No, <laughs> no, we do not. Boy, you try to find a nigga with a billion dollars, you're dead. You're not done, you're dead. <laughs> going off what they tell us to trust. I mean, it just seems like the dumbest thing ever. And I'm not trying to say I'm a conspiracy theorist and I think he's alive and this is a fake body, but it's just bizarre. Headlines read, the incompetence of police and prosecutors is simply astounding. Astounding. Unbelievable. Italian. Astonishing. 
improbable. And members of his church state to this day (laughs) that this was a witch hunt set by the South Korean government because they did not want to take responsibility for the tragedy. And they state that Yoo Byung-un has retired from all of his managerial positions in 1997, has focused solely on photography, and he doesn't even own shares in the ferry company. But either way, Yoo Byung-un is said to be dead. Rumors, of course, start that he's not dead. There oh. have been sightings of him, quote, sightings of him in China. And I don't know because I, I mean, do you really even know what this guy looks like? And like, True. who's saying they saw him? Yeah, There's a yeah, bunch yeah, of sightings yeah, yeah. of everyone everywhere. But I saw Elvis like two days ago. There. <laughs> is he dead? Was he not dead? How involved is he in all of these tragedies? And how many lives did this guy live? And how many more things is he connected to that we just don't know about? Nah, probably like. And how many things are going on behind the scenes that the general public has no idea about? Because if it wasn't for the ferry accident, we wouldn't even really be talking about his connection with the Five Oceans incident, or we wouldn't even know all of these subsidiary shell company holdings, all of that. There's also another theory that he was murdered, but um, we're not going to get into that. So anyway, or we could. there's also another theory that he's in France and on his hilltop village that he purchased. So I don't know. The guy has money and power everywhere. So what do I know? I don't he's... know anything, according to my lawyer and myself. And I don't know anything either. Please. I am But dumb. this is the case like, of the Odeang so. incident where 32 bodies were found oh. in an attic <sighs> and how a billionaire's name keeps popping up in that tragedy and popping up again on Wednesday. We're going to do a deep dive, but I think it was just, I felt like it'd be important for you to know who this guy is and all the things that he's associated with and how the companies that he runs are being operated. So I will see you guys on Wednesday to talk about the Sewar Ferry. And please stay safe. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Bye. You stay safe too, Rotten Mango. I ain't gonna lie, bro. We gotta watch the, the Wednesday one right now. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm here. Not only am I here, you can expect a lot more Ron Mango on the channel, but they got my attention on God. 32 bodies? If that was all done by the same person, it couldn't have been. It had to have been a team, bro. That billionaire is not dead. He's not. Bro, if you think he's actually dead, I'm not gonna say you're stupid, but I'm gonna look you in your eye and squint a little bit and, and tilt my head like, really? <laughs> like you really think he's dead bro hopefully my commentary wasn't too annoying i hope y'all enjoyed this because i most definitely did word all right enough of me no seriously enough of me it's been your boy try blue good day good afternoon good night good evening good morning and most importantly but unfortunately i'm gonna see y'all tomorrow word word <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> yo, it's the end, leave a like and share it to your friends and your kin, when I post a video, I'm gonna need y'all to attend, thank you for the view, but I ain't done with you, 2023, I'm about to be Jordan with the flu, yeah, join a tribe, yeah, join a tribe, I'm gonna need y'all to subscribe.